Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg, Paris, February 22nd, 1764. The sun cannot always shine, and clouds often gather, only, however, to be again dispersed. I did not make haste to send tidings of the sad death of Countess Van Eyck. I thought it would be sufficient if I prepared the hearts of the people in Salzburg for the sad event, while leaving it to others to report the end. Nobody likes to die anywhere, but here it is doubly sad for an honest German if he falls ill or dies. Soon afterwards, a sudden and unexpected event plunged me into a certain embarrassment. My dear Wolfgang suddenly got a sore throat and a cold, so that on the 16th, the morning on which it started, he developed such an inflammation of the throat that he was in danger of choking. He also had a very high fever. After four days, he got up and is now well again. My little girl, too, is suffering from a cold, but it is not feverish. Now I beg you to have four masses read as soon as possible at Maria Plain, and one at the Holy Child at Loretto. These we promised for the sake of our children, who were both ill. I hope that the other masses will, as I asked, always continue to be read at Loretto for as long as we are away. The Duke d'Aen has arranged that in a fortnight at latest we shall drive out again to Versailles, in order that we may present to Madame Victorie the king's second daughter, to whom it may has been dedicated, of the engraved sonatas of the great Wolfgang. The second will be dedicated, I think, to Madame la Comtesse de Tesse. Within three or at most four weeks, important things will have happened, if God wills. We have tilled the soil well and now hope for a good harvest. One must take things as they come. I should have at least twelve Louis Dior more if my children had not had to stay at home for a few days. Thank God they are better. Do you know what people here are always wanting? They are trying to persuade me to let my boy be inoculated with smallpox. But as I have now expressed sufficiently clearly my aversion to this impertinence, they are leaving me in peace. Here inoculation is the general fashion, but for my part I leave the matter to the grace of God. It depends on his grace whether he wishes to keep this marvel of nature in the world in which he has placed it, or take it to himself. I shall certainly watch over it so well that it is all one whether we are in Salzburg or in any other part of the world, but it is this watching which makes traveling expensive. Mr. de Herbert has handed to Wolfgang from the king fifty Louis Dior and a gold box. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg, Paris, March 4, 1764. I ought to have written to you long ago, but the things I have had to do for some days and shall have to do until the 10th in order to make sure that between six and nine on the evening of that day I shall pocket seventy-five Louis Dior, have, as you will understand, prevented me. On the third our servant Sebastian Winter left here with, with the country coach via Strasbourg for Danuskingen. God. He has entered the service of Prince von Furstinger, as Frisier. I have taken on another one called Jean-Pierre Potivin, who speaks good German and French, for he was born in Alsace. Now I have to buy his clothes again, a heavy expense. Madame, you will think perhaps that we are taking part in quite extraordinary carnival festivities. Oh, you are very much mistaken. 
It has never occurred to me to attend balls, which only begin after midnight. Here there are balls in every quarter, but you must know that they are for the thirty or forty people, and that one or at most two violins without a violin cello play the minuets. And what sort of minuets? Why, minuets which were danced already in the time of Henry the Fourth and in the whole town there are about two or three favorite minuets, which must always be played, because the people cannot dance to any save those particular ones during the playing of which they learn to dance. But above all, contradances, or what we call English dances, are danced. All this I know from hearsay only, for I have not seen them. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg. From Paris, April 1st, 1764. We are all well, and we thank God from the bottom of our hearts. And now I have the pleasure of informing you that I hope in a few days to lodge with the bankers Turton et Beurer, 200 Louis Dior, to be entrusted to safe hands, and in due course sent off to Salzburg. On April 9th, I shall again have to stand the shock which I had on March 10th, but I doubt very much whether this one will be as great as the first, for at the concert on March 10th, I took in 112 Louis Dior, but 50 to 60 Louis Dior are not to be despised either, and if there are more, one simply pockets them. Not a farthing is paid at the door, but whoever is without a ticket is not admitted, no matter who he is. My friend sold the tickets a week beforehand, each for a labthaler, or a fetterthaler, four of which make a Louis Dior. But most of the tickets, in blocks of twelve and twenty-four, are given to ladies who sell them the more easily, as out of politeness one cannot refuse to buy them. As the saying goes, Frenchmen like to be fooled. On the billet, which is written on a card and bears my seal, there are only these words, A Théâtre de M. Felix, Rue Portet, saint Honore, whatever. On the billet is the name of the hall. It is a hall in the house of a distinguished gentleman, in which there is a small theatre where the nobles often act and produce plays among themselves, and I got this room through Madame de Clermont, who lives in the house. But the permission to hold the two concerts there is something quite exceptional, and is directly against the privilege which the king is given to the opera, the concert spirituel, and the French and Italian theatres and this permission had to be obtained from the lieutenant general of police and many of the leading ladies who sent messengers and wrote applications in their own hand i beg you to have a mass said for us every day for eight days after april tenth you can distribute them as you like provided that four are read at loretto at the holy child and four at an altar of Our Lady. I only ask you to observe for certain the days I mention. Should this letter not arrive until after April 12th, though I think it will arrive before, please see that the masses are begun on the following day. There are important reasons. And now it is time to tell you something about my two friends from Saxony, Baron von Hopf. Garten and Baron von Buz. They left here for Italy about two months ago and were bound for Vienna via Corinthia or Salzburg. I gave them a short letter for you, mentioning what I now write. If they travel through Salzburg, please assist them, so that they may not only see the sights of the place, but also have due honor shown to them at court for I myself have witnessed the great honors which these gentlemen received at the courts of the Elector of Bavaria, at Ludwigsburg, at the Palatine Court, at Schwetz 
Gingen, at Mainz, at Brussels, from Prince Karl, and here at Versailles. They have been our loyal traveling companions. Sometimes they ordered our lodgings. Sometimes we ordered theirs. Here you will find two men who have everything which honest men should have in this world. And although they are both Lutherans, yet they are Lutherans of a different type, and men by whose conversation I have often profited much. When parting, Baron von Bose gave Wolfgang a remembrance of beautiful book containing spiritual thoughts in verse, and wrote the following lines in front. Take this book, little seven-year-old Orpheus, from the hand of your admirer and friend. Read it often and feel its divine songs and lend them in these blissful hours of emotion your irresistible harmonies so that the heartless despiser of religion may read them and pause may hear them and fall down and worship god friedrich karl baron von bos these two gentlemen can tell you a hundred things about our journey, and their company will afford you a thousand pleasures. If they go to Salzburg, they will turn up after the Ascensia in Venice. The taller of the two is Baron Hofgarten, and the little one is Baron von Bose. We have, by this time, made the acquaintance of all the foreign envoys in Paris. The English ambassador, my lord, Bedford and his son are very partial to us, and the Russian prince, Galitsyn, loves us as if we were his children. In a few days the sonatas will be ready, which little Master Wolfgang has dedicated to the Comtesse de Tessé. They would have been ready before, but the Countess absolutely refused to accept the dedication written by our best friend, M. Grimm so it had to be altered and as she is usually in versailles we have had to wait all this time for an answer it is a pity that this dedication was not allowed to be engraved but the countess refuses to be praised and in this dedication both she and my boy are very vividly described the comtesse de tessa has given Wolfgang another gold watch and an earl a gold box. And now you must know who this man is, this great friend of mine to whom I owe everything here, this M. Grimm. He is secretary of the Duke d'Orleans, and he is a man of learning and a great friend of humanity. All my other letters and recommendations brought me nothing, even those from the French ambassador in Vienna, the imperial ambassador in Paris, and all the letters of introduction from our minister in Brussels, Count Cubenzel, Prince Conti, Duchess d'Aguilin, and all the others, a whole litany of whom I could write down. M. Grimm alone, to whom I had a letter from Frankfurt, merchant's wife, has done everything. He brought our business to court, he arranged for the first concert, and he paid me on his own account eighty louis d'or. That is to say, he got rid of three hundred and twenty tickets. In addition, he paid for the lighting, as more than sixty large wax candles were burnt. Well, this Mr. Grimm secured permission for the first concert and is now arranging for the second for which one hundred tickets we have already been sold so you see what a man can do who has a good sense and a kind heart he comes from regensburg but he has been in paris for over fifteen years already and knows how to launch everything in the right direction so that it is bound to turn out as he wishes. Written on the cover. My children and my wife send their greetings to all. A copper engraver is working himself to death to engrave our portraits, which someone, an amateur, has painted excellently well. Wolfgang is playing the clavier. 
I am standing behind his chair, playing the violin. Now, Neural is leaning on the clavecin with one arm, while in the other hand she is holding music, as if she were singing. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg. From London, April 25th, 1764. Thank God we have safely crossed the Max Klanerbach. Yet we have not done so without making a heavy contribution in vomiting. I, however, have had the worst time of it. But we saved money which would have been spent on emetics. And thank God we are all well. Whoever has too much money should just take a journey from Paris to London, for his purse will certainly be lightened. We had the honor of spending four Louis d'Or in Calais, although we did not take a single meal at home, but took them with the procureur du Roy et de l'Emerante with whom we also left our carriage. As soon as you arrive in Dover, it is even worse, and when you land from the boat, you find yourself surrounded by twenty to forty people who are all your most obedient servant, and who want to snatch your luggage from your own servants in order to carry it to the inn, after which they must be paid what they demand. I had to pay three Louis Dior for the crossing, for I took a boat for my family, for which one has to pay five Louis Dior. I therefore took with me four other passengers, who each paid half Louis Dior. To be landed in a small boat at Dover from the large boat, each person has to pay half a Fetterthaler. So I had to pay six small or three large loopthalers, for I had two servants with me, and had taken seven post horses as far as Calais as one servant rode. The second servant was an Italian called Porta, who has done this journey eight times already so that all my friends in Paris advised me to take him with me. It was a very good thing, too, for he arranged everything well and did all the bargaining. In London, everyone seems to me to be in a fancy dress, and you cannot imagine what my wife and my little girl look like in English hats, and I and our big wolf gang in English clothes. My next letter will tell you more. We greet you, Mozart. Here's my new address. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg. From London, May 28th, 1764. You know how that the farther away an object is, the smaller does it seem to the eye. And so it is with my letters. My handwriting becomes smaller according to the distance I am from Salzburg. If we were to sail over to America, my letters would probably become quite illegible. For a mere letter without a cover, the cost from here to Germany is a shilling, and another shilling for the cover. So that a letter with a cover costs two shillings. A guinea is 21 shillings and is equal in value to the Louis Dior for in Dover, the banker Manet, who had been recommended to me in Paris, gave me 12 guineas for 12 Louis Dior. French money is not accepted here. You can work out, therefore, the value of a shilling. In her letter to Paris, our most gracious Frau Hagenauer suggested, perhaps, even to come to England and Holland. When I left Salzburg, I had not quite decided to come to England, but as everybody in Paris particularly urged us to go to London, I made up my mind to do so. And now, by the help of God, we are here. But we shall not go to Holland, 
That I can assure everyone. Up to the present, we do not know how we shall fare. We really ought to have come here in winter. On April 27th, we were with the king and queen in the queen's palace in St. James Park, so that by the fifth day after our arrival, we were already at court. The present was only 24 guineas, which we received immediately on leaving the king's apartment. But the graciousness with which both His Majesty the King and Her Majesty the Queen received us cannot be described. In short, their easy manner and friendly ways made us forget that they were the King and Queen of England. At all courts up to the present we have been received with extraordinary courtesy. But the welcome which we have been given here exceeds all others. A week later we were walking in St. James Park. The king came along, driving with the queen, and although we all had on different clothes, they recognized us nevertheless, and not only greeted us, but the king opened the window, leaned out and saluted us, and especially our master Wolfgang, nodding to us and waving his hand. In addition to all his kindness, um, Mr. Grimm, our sworn friend, who did everything for us in Paris, gave Nan Earl, on our departure, a gold watch, and Wolfgang a fruit knife, such as is used in Paris with glacé fruits, the handle of which is of mother-of-pearl, set in gold. It has two blades, one of gold and the other of silver. I intended to send off this letter a week ago. I was, however, not only prevented from doing so, but I wanted to wait for some news. But I have nothing more to tell except that on May 19th we were again with the king and queen from six to ten in the evening, when the only other people present were the two princes, who are the king's brothers, and another, the brother of the queen. When we left the room we were again handed twenty-four guineas. If this happens every three or four weeks we can put up with it. Now we are going to give on June 5th a so-called benefit concert or Concerto al Nostra Profito. It is really not the time to give such concerts and little profit is to be expected from them as the season is over and the expenses of an undertaking of this kind amount to 40 guineas. But since the king's birthday is on the 4th, many of the nobility will come up to town from the country, so we must take the risk and make use of this opportunity to become known. Each person pays half a guinea, and if it were winter, I could certainly count on 600 persons, that is, 300 guineas. Now, however, they all go to the pleasure gardens and into the country. Basta. Everything will certainly succeed if, with God's help, we keep well and if he only keeps our invincible Wolfgang in good health. The king placed before him not only works of Wagenseel, but also those of Bach, Abel, and Hendel. And he played off everything prima vista. He played so splendidly on the king's organ that they all value his organ playing more highly than his clavier playing. Then he accompanied the queen in an aria which she sang, and also a flautist who played a solo. Finally, he took the bass part of some airs of Handel, which happened to be lying there and played the most beautiful melody on it, and in such a manner that everybody was amazed. In short, what he knew when we left Salzburg is a mere shadow compared with what he knows now. It exceeds all that one can imagine. He greets you from the clavier, where, at the moment, he is seated, playing through Kapellmeister Bach's trio. He also sends you greetings, not a day passes without 
Wolfgang's talking at least 30 times of Salzburg and of his and our friends and patrons. He has now continually in his head an opera which he wants to produce there with several young people. I have already had to count up all the players whom he has noted down f for his orchestra, among whom Kolb and Ranthful are often mentioned. 